Hello folks, um, well, first of all, thanks to all the subscribers and um, great comments left by everyone, and I'll give a few shout outs, I, I couldn't do this very good today because um, for some reason all my um, emails, or you know, all these comments that you send me, they weren't coming through on the emails and I couldn't print it out properly, but I've got a few here, I can give a few shout outs here, it's Peter Darnian, Paul McCormick, um, Alan O'Keefe, Marty Jerusa, Rehearsal Pete, John Williams, Francis Potter, Tony Dowden, Derek Rowe and Matt Pedwell. Thanks guys for all your nice comments. Um, well, I wasn't going to do this um, video. This is another video what I had all sort of in bits in my computer. I've got a couple others. What I did, you know, I sort of done all the bits and that. And <clears throat> what I do is I put them in folders, all the clips, and try to get around to doing them as and when I can to edit them together, like, you know. And then I do this little talk to put on the beginning of the videos. But I mean, these videos, what I'm putting up now is what I did before the missus got really bad. So I'm just trying just to chuck a few of them out, like, you know. So I'm a bit behind, really, with the videos, what I've been doing. I mean, I see this week um, <laughs> quite a few of the other restorers out there. They've been doing the old car transporters. There's, um, oh, crap, old Nick done one, a dinky one. Um... Uh, Paul, oh, what's it on about? David Hyde, he done one, the same one as Crap Old Nick, and then there's uh, Martin Dare done, the one that I've done, and I don't know, it seems everybody's gone mad on the car transporters, and I, I actually was doing one at the same time, but I haven't put mine out yet, yet. so mine will be coming out in like a couple of weeks when I finish putting it all together, like sort of thing. But anyway, I've had to sort of knock this up from a screenshot, really, of comments left on the video YouTube type thing. Peter Dern Dernian, he's on about the old um, the uh, Triumph I'd done. Coventry Police <laughs> had one of these in white and they had the stripe down there. Yeah, they called it jam sandwiches, I remember. I remember the um, Ford Granada jam sandwiches and, and all they, they used to call them jam sandwiches as well. Uh, Keith Orton's sweet paint job on a sweet cast, and thanks, Keith. Uh, Paul, Paul Power. Bob, don't worry. <laughs> Everybody understands, but we all wish you well, and, and the wife. Remember, this is entertainment for all, so, so as and when the clips appear, we will watch them. Keep safe, look after your wife, the biscuit man. Cheers, Paul, thanks for that. As saying about my wife, um, well, it's not my wife, it's my partner, really, we're not married. Um, I did have a bit of a fright this week. She, um, a few days ago, she, I came home, I came home from the doctors and um, she had a fit. I was there talking to her and she was like behind me in the, in the front room sat down there and I was there just washing a few dishes for her like and I turned around and all of a sudden she's having a fit and I thought bloody hell like you know what do I do like I tried to wake her up and she, she got went unconscious and all sorts anyway I ended up getting the ambulance for her and, that, and they took her in and um, they couldn't find they'd done scans they'd done everything they couldn't find anything wrong with her so I don't know what caused her or anything but she's home again now they, they brought her on the same day and she's she seems to be okay again now so but you know what a fright it was a bit of a fright a few days ago um so now i'm trying to get back to normal again now jeff quickfall talk about 10 minutes on pins and needles watching paint dry and tape peel um <laughs> excellent job with your eyes on about the old trying 2000 um i have tried this on other projects that is a that is a warm to the touch and not hot. Oh, I don't know what he's on about. Oh, he's on about. He's on about peeling uh, when I peel the um, the tape off. You know, to put an air dryer on it or something to make it warm it up a bit so it softens the glue on the tape. I'm never bothered with that. This I, I peels off too quick for that. <laughs> That's why I make a mess sometimes. I suspect. Metal Mania 3D and the Diecast Workshop Auto. Auto body shop, fine line tape, more expensive but easy to remove and best of all sharp edges and nice lines. Cheers, KC. I've never seen that. I don't know. I might, my mate's got an, um, a spray shop, so I might ask him about that. Might be able to get me some for nothing. <laughs> he might give me a roll for free. Glenn Stimson. Hello, Bob. Look after yourself and your wife. Don't worry about the videos. We'll always be here for you and your wife. Great restoration. Learned a lot from you. Many thanks. The hell's that out there? Bloody dogs out! Dogs out there fighting! 
Christ. Cool. Anyway, <clears throat> where were I? Where was I? Cool, blimey. Look at them. Martin Dare's Dinky Restorations. I bought us a nice restoration. Masking can very be, be very frustrating at times. Hope you and the missus stay safe. Cheers, Martin. You too, mate. Crap old Nick. Beautiful job once again, Bob. With the colours switched around. And it suits the model a lot better. My heart sank when you removed the piece of masking tape and some of the white had got through. <laughs> yeah, me too. Sometimes you can get it off with the auto so without take damaging the paint underneath. I just paint over it, mate. And once the lacquer's on it, it sort of covers it up anyway. If it's too bad, I'd use it again. Keith Edmonds, great colour combination. Good tutorial on the box. Hope everything works out for you and the partner. Thanks, mate. Jeff Mower, hi Bob, keeping my fingers crossed that they don't postpone the op. Yeah, so am I. Because she, she's got to have it done. I mean, the quicker the better. Because, you know, like I say, if you don't have it done, it's it's not looking very um, good. Anyway, Walter Ros Ros Co. Ros Co. Another great gem, Bob. All the best to you and your message. Cheers, Walter. John Laystander, uh, Bob, lovely job. Great to see you again. Makes my Fridays. But firstly, you and your dearly beloved, stay safe. And we've got a few more here. Um, David Hyde. Oh yeah, <laughs> he's he's the one who was doing the um, car transport I was watching. Thanks, Bob, for the call out. I've been looking for caustic soda. Yeah, because he got a machine or something. You put this solution in there, and it well, it takes quite a while to clean the models off. But I thought, bloody hell. It's, Tommy's took to clean that off, I could have bloody restored a whole car. And he's he can't use it no more because um they don't make this solution anymore or something for this machine he's got. And I told him to try the old caustic soda. <coughs> and he's gonna um buy all the masks and stuff like this and the gloves to use it, use with it and try it out. So keep your eye out for David Hyde. I'd like to see his first chat time using the old caustic soda, that should be funny. Uh, Metal Mania 3D again, Diecast Workshop. Hello there, Bob. Hope you're doing okay in your partner. Awesome video, great job. Stay safe from um, Tasmania, Australia. Thanks, mate. Uh, John Gorey, thanks for another nice restoration, Bob. Under the circumstances, it's great that you're staying on the channel. Well, yeah, well, I'm trying to, trying to sort of forget about everything else, really. I, I mean, I do enjoy doing this, but... I mean, you know, it's worrying about the missus all the time, like at the moment. But I'm just trying to do bits as I can, can you know, keep you lot happy and bits as and when I can. Um, thanks, um, John. <coughs> Constantino, cool. I've got. I uh, don't worry, I ain't got the coronavirus. <laughs> Constantino Rizzi, this, Bob. This looks like it's brand new. Out of the box, beautiful. Great job. Hope your missus is tended to soon, and she can feel better. Yeah, so do I. Thanks, Constantino. Uh, Marty Clack, awesome job, Bob. Uh, you take care of yourself. Better off. Stay safe, my friend. Um, Tommy flying that another classic, Bob restoration. <laughs> I appreciate you providing these high quality videos. High quality. <laughs> I don't know about that. <coughs> Every everybody got an opinion. <laughs> um, but remember, you we should be grateful for you to you, not the other way around. Videos when you can provide them are a bonus for us all. Keep safe. Hope you and your missus stay well. Thanks, Tommy. Uh, Jeff Baker, very nice restoration and triumph on the triumph bulb. Also, like the um, when you've done the computer printout for the box, nicely done. Take care of yourself and your wife. Hope she's getting better soon. We'll be, we'll keep you both in our prayers. Don't worry, my friend. We'll be patiently wait, waiting to see your next restoration build. Well, you see one in a minute, Jeff. So, <laughs> thanks, mate. Pete Beardsley, <clears throat> great job once again, Bob. And once again, don't worry about the videos. Everybody's telling me don't worry about the videos, but you know, I mean, I, I gotta, I gotta stay in the picture, and I, you know, I, I like doing them. So, I, I mean, it's, it's, as soon as the misses is all out, I'll be putting them on pretty regular, like again. But at the moment, I'm just like I say, I'm putting one up as and when I can, because I have got a few clips already done of some. It's like I've got, um, like I've got the car transporter one now in the folder, all in bits. I've got to put that together. And I've also got, oh, I've got the uh, Joe 90. That'll be coming up soon. 
so um, you, you'll be able to see that one soon how I, managed, how I got on with that it came out pretty good actually but I've got to put all the clips together I've got them finished but I've got the clips all in bits you know and, and the old computer they got to be all edited together so <clears throat> I'm just doing it when I can get in there to do it really um, Queen of Toy Collector you're doing fine Bob your wife comes first I'll look after my wife too he nearly lost her to um, a brain cancer so it's bloody hard to do your hobbies and have, be a carer yeah no it is it is hard mate um, Bill's Diecast Customs great job again Bob watch all your videos don't forget to comment as well lots of laughs but, Bill thanks Bill Paddy O'Brien great video Bob because of you I'm now collecting corgi corgis what dogs <laughs> nah I know what you mean mate I can um get the parts in the US keep the videos coming and all the best yeah but it's getting dodgy over here now with this bloody virus business isn't it we can't get paint we can't get parts model supplies is shut down dinky club shut down so I don't know what's going to happen now we can just have to try and repair stuff with, as and when you can now and when, when the paint runs out the videos run out you know what I mean that's what's going to happen next until this all this business is finished with it's getting a bit bloody stupid now isn't it and you know they want people to be able to keep themselves occupied during this um, lockdown thing and all that but how can, how can you if you can't get any supplies what you're meant to do Graham Mummery another top job Bob please don't worry about keeping us amused although I'd love to see your work the family comes for us yeah cheers Graham generate the wave Bob don't feel obligated to do videos bigger fish to fry at the moment Mrs can't afford to get this no she can't um I was a bloke in East Village out of Toronto 2000 in Brown. <clears throat> and it's good that the Restoration Channel is all sending their best wishes to you and your wife. And your aren't rivals or, or anything like that. You know, No, we're not rivals. We, we all talk to each other. We're all friends with each other. Oh, PC046. Hi, right, Bob. Use some 2000 wet and dry paper with soap and water to flat the paint. This is great for flattening the imperfection. Ah, oh, don't bother with all that, mate. It's only a little corgi car. They come out pretty good anyway. I don't have to worry about, you know, any gloss, glossy um, finishes like that. They come out pretty good anyway once I've lacquered them. Sometimes I don't even have to do that. So I, I ain't going to bother with all that wet and dry business. I know some people do. On bigger models, maybe on a 118 scale or something like that, you might want to do it. But not on these little things like this. It's not, it's not worth the bother. Well, anyway, <clears throat> that's the end of the, all the old comments there. I, I think that's long enough, really. You don't want to keep seeing me yabbering on here. Um, today, anyway, today you're going to do a Matchbox makeover. <laughs> Not a Marty's one, a Bob one. <clears throat> but, anyway. So, um, until the next time, um, like I say, thanks, ev thanks for every everyone for watching and sticking with me. Um, not much more to say but thank you very much and I'll see you very soon hopefully all being well I'll see you very shortly with another video so until then sit back and enjoy this one bye bye for now okay here we go this, this week's um, restoration is um, a couple of matchbox um, models I don't usually do matchboxes but Sorry Marty, I'm doing these this week. <laughs> you might get a couple, you probably have had a couple sent to you already anyway. But thanks to he, Ian Hulley, he sent these two in. He sent me quite a few models actually. I'm very grateful to him, he's done quite a bit for this channel. And um, it's down to him that we've got this video today. So um, my first go at doing a couple of Matchbox cars. I like the Corgi stuff but these is quite big ones anyway, they're not little tiny matchboxes, so I'm looking forward to doing them. So anyway, let's get on with that. That's your app, more work. Okay folks, first of all, as you see I've got my transfers for these already. I made these up on the old um, computer. Just all I've done is went on Google really and looked for something like it you know like the proper transfers figured out the shape or the, you know the size they got to be printed and i've like enhanced them a bit in the photo suite and they haven't come out too bad 
because it, it weighs stickers on here really on this this one but i thought a transfer would look better so anyway they're all ready to go on when, when i've got them painted up now these here is not corgi they're matchbox as i said but a nice couple of nice little models i've actually already you know had these apart because i've done the old um what do you call it um tapping and dying i've screwed them back together so if i get my little um screwdriver we'll get these apart and we'll get them um ready for um you know restoration you must say you might say not must say i don't know what i'm on about right let's get the old screws out if i put these in a certain way because they're all cut for a certain hole see some some i haven't sort of drilled deep enough and some i have that's why i rather do the rivets they, they are they're about the same they too look so get all these out and then we can see what we got bloody old screws there right that's the two back ones that's the front one for that one so we'll get this one apart in a minute don't want to come apart now that he's already been apart once stubborn bugger this one there he is that all comes off in one we've got the old um, steering rack in there that i mean this here i'm on, all i'm going to do with this is polish it up it doesn't need stripping that because it's it's just metal anyway so it doesn't need stripping that looks a bit bent actually there better yeah so all i'm going to do with this is just polish it up a bit take the tires off i might even leave them on there i don't know yet but it doesn't need a lot of work doing to it it's, it's not painted this isn't painted it's just pure metal so it's just got to be cleaned up and polished up really that doesn't need taking apart there don't or doesn't need any um caustic soda treatment now this here is just a a pull out plastic piece just needs a bit of a wash glass it's the same now this glass needs a bit of attention because i haven't got another piece that's partly why i've tapped and screwed it until i get another piece i'll have to try and um, rub some of these marks out of this windscreen because they're not very good sides are okay that'll come out nice but the front one looks a bit well there's a couple of dirty great scratches there or cracks there lot which ain't very good but you know it's going to look better than what it was when we started the lights just pop out the little plastic pieces like they just pop out of their holes like that that you see and the actual things on the top i had to drill that so that's gonna they're gonna have to be glued back in i had to drill them to get them out and they, they just they'll just pop out i sheared off the bottom of the actual rivet well i thought i did anyway perhaps i've got to do it a bit more you know if i get my if i get my pliers there my flat flat one and just round it off slightly turn it around slightly get that bit camera around there and then I can squeeze out it should come out now it should pop out quite easily should pop out quite easily. I don't think it can hear me. <laughs> Get out. Come on. There it is. Uh, I'll, I'll just, before I put that back, I should just, you know, file them bits down a bit more just so it pops in easier. And then just, I'll put a bit of glue around the edges of that. But that's all we've got to do with that. <clears throat> now the doors. I think you've got to take all this out for the doors, which is a bit of a pain. And this up, no. 
that's that's all riveted in on these so I think really you've got to actually you know get this out shoot the top of this off a bit so that pops off but I mean I could do that because it's going to be a lot easier to paint them these are a lot easier to paint with the doors off than what they are on because the doors keep shutting and messing around when you're trying to paint it and it's, you're missing bits here so I think that's what I'll do is drill them shear them off the top of there pop that off because I can always glue that back on see that will glue back on because I'll leave, leave the height of the rivet so it slips over the rivet head things and then just put a bit of glue on there and, or underneath and it'll make life easier to spray it so yep yeah, we will be taking that off right that's that one in pieces now this one here just as simple really I've well done as I've made a, I've, I've drilled and tapped that and all I've done there is I've sheared the ends of the rivets off you'll see in a minute because it's a very shallow there so I'm going to do this screw take him out there as you can see that comes off the same but this has got to be painted again but it's very shallow there you can't really I'll take that off that you can't really get a lot in there I'm gonna, what I'm going to have to do is drill down so far and use some very tiny rivets what I've got for that one pardon me to stick that through there again because look the depth of that is not very much I mean it might not be too bad because the actual thickness there isn't too, much, too bad so I might get away with it but I'm going to put some little tiny rivets in there I'm not going to tap this one I have for now but that's just you know for now if you know what I mean I'm not leaving that tap that's going to be riveted at the end right then we're going to get these get the interior out of this one so I don't open the doors again I don't know if it's best to open the doors and try and get it out or what I can't remember I've done it last time yeah that's that's the way you open the doors get it out of the way that's it and then the interior will pop up that's it because it, what it does it slides underneath as you lift it up there goes underneath it goes underneath that piece there so you've got to lift it up like that like that see that piece there goes underneath there's like a little if you look at the back look at it from the back there so what you do is you put it under like that and that covers all that up you see and that's how it goes so that's pretty simple there's the old man laid in his stretcher he, he actually comes off he pops off like you see but all that's got to be cleaned up before it goes back all right the glass again the glass is riveted in now what about these these doors i think they'll come out yeah they'll come out that without having to um that's a lot easier isn't it you just flick behind that piece of piece of steel there actually I think that piece comes out pretty sure that just slots in there yeah that's that's a lot easier it might be it might be a lot harder getting it back in there but we'll soon find out when it comes to putting it back now the bumper there's a rivet right there that's got to be sheared off and I suppose that just pulls away from like that but we've got to get these drilled out so we can get the glass out and get this back piece off here because that if you see there's a little piece on there that holding the, the back door before we can go any further with that so I'm going to get this drilled I'm not going to do it on camera because it's so awkward trying to you know to get in here and I'm going to be knocking the camera everywhere and all sorts all I'm going to do folks I'm going to get a slightly wider drill than that and I'm going to 
flatten that end of that rivet off there so I can get this front piece to pull off and then just do the same you've seen it in other videos anyway by other people to get these screens out you've got to do the same with a, a bigger size drill bit it just flattens it off without going through the roof you don't want to go through the roof which is knackered but you just got to flatten these off and then I can get get the rest of this apart so bear with me folks I will be um, back before I do any more I'll probably do that in the same off camera I'll probably get this these doors off with the same drill bit I'm just going to flatten that piece over that see and then that piece will pop off and the doors will come out but like I say it's going to be a lot easier and more comfortable for me to do it off camera because I ain't trying to work you know with my hands I got I actually got an iPhone and this here is an iPhone about five inches away from my face <laughs> and about three inches away from my hands and I'm trying to you know trying to work like that it's all it's showing you odd things but it's so awkward when you've got to drill something or anything like that it's so bloody awkward to do it you know so bear with me I will be back okay folks I'm back I've had a I've had a wonderful time for the past what 40 minutes I've managed to screw right down, you know, drill right down to these bits for this glass. I've had this glass out. I've just put it back now to show you what I was talking about. And I thought, like an idiot, <laughs> nothing can be that simple, can it? I thought once this glass is out, there's a little tab there holding the door in, see? And I thought, oh yeah, once you've got the glass out, the door comes out. Well, not the case. <laughs> if I just pop this glass out again because I've had it out once I'll just push it through there look there's a little tab now normally that is what holds the back doors of these in but oh no oh no can't be so easy not on this one matchbox got to be different they also had if I can zoom in here I don't know if you can see this properly you see these two you see these two little tabs here well there was a bit overhanging there and that was holding that door in as well and for the last 40 minutes I've been chipping away and trying to bend these back slightly but in the end I just managed to scrape the actual ends of them away the metal so I can get the bloody back door out it comes out now, you know that, if I show you, I'll just pop it out that, because I've actually, there that comes out quite easily now, but what a bloody job, so I've actually managed to widen these slightly more now, but when it goes back together with the glass, the glass tab will hold the door in anyway, so, you know, they've been extra careful and they put another piece of metal over them tabs to hold the door in as well. What a bloody job that was to get that out, but anyway, it's done now. So this is all out, and I'll clean that up. Because you you got to have these in pieces ready to spray them. I've got still got to take this front piece off. The easiest one was this one here, because I, I, like I said, I was going to screw them out, or drill them out. That just comes off now, that, see? So that'll glue back onto there when we want to put the doors back and the doors just go into there that well that's going to make it a lot easier to spray now see because you can never never spray them properly with the doors on you know you're, you're fighting the doors opening and you're missing bits here and you've got to get in the door shuts and it's a lot easier you know if the, the actual model is completely took to pieces you get a lot better result by doing it that way I know you, some people do spray them with the doors on but not me I'd rather I know I did the Cortina, and after the mess I had with that thing, you know, I've, I've decided from now on I'm going to take the doors off, you know, try my best to take them off and do it, you know, that way. So anyway, we're going to get these dunked in the old caustic soda, all the doors and everything, and that, I don't know whether it's worth it, it isn't worth dunking that bit, because I mean, the, the bottom's clean, it'll take glue. And I'm not really worried about that there, how the paint is on that, because you're not going to see it anyway. So I shan't bother with that. I'll just jump and dunk the doors and everything else. Same with that spring there, I ain't going to bother with that. It's not worth bothering with 
because you're not going to see it anyway. As long as it's functionable and it does what it's meant to do, that's all that matters. So anyway, that's the next bit now. We're going to um, get these given a bath in the old caustic solder. And I expect more than likely I'll use the old hot jog jar for that. So you can watch what happens, watch it fizz up or whatever. I don't you see a lot because when the water goes all misty and that's it. But anyway, that's the way I'm going to do it. So let's get on and do that. Okay, so the kettle has boiled. So we'll put some water in. And now, we need the caustic soda, of course. And there she goes. Hopefully. I don't think this one's going to take a lot of stripping, actually. <laughs> Saying that, well, you don't know, really. You can't, you can't tell. Let's put a bit more in. There, we'll leave that. We'll let that go for 10 minutes or so. And um, then I can um, take it out and give it a good scrub outside. And then I'll bring it back to you when it's all cleaned off. I'll show you how much paint's come off of it. And then I shall obviously have to um, wire brush it after that, but then. Well, there is paint coming off it down the bottom there, I can see it. But anyway, we'll leave that one going for a while. Let that cook for a while, I'm going to go in and have a cup of tea. Be back directly. Okay, right. I've had my cup of tea, I'll come back and I've just emptied all the water over here and spoiled it out. So, um, let's see how much paint's left on these things. They don't look too bad. It looks like the coal stick has got rid of most of the most of the paint. There's, a, there's nothing left on the ambulance. He's all right. Doors, all the doors looks all right. There's a little few little chips on there, but not too bad. Back door's all all right. Yeah, they don't look too bad. And there's, there's just a few odd bits here and there on this one, but all the bits are just chip off when I start the old wire brush treatment on it. Just a few bits there that, that'll dry off and then um, chip off. So anyway, I'm going to give this a wire brush in now, and um, we'll bring it back again, and then we can start spraying it, and I shall um, be showing you the new spray booth in action. Okay, so they're all... Um, cleaned up now all nice and shiny let's take a look at the new spray booth and get spraying okay folks here's the new spray booth it's um it's the up rated version they do a couple of versions of these most of them they're like about 60 to 80 quid and the actual this part here comes out the back well I didn't want one of them because because of me shed here I needed it to come out the top like that and it still goes up there like that and comes out of the vent out, outside the shed but this one here is a is a double va uh, double fan version as well so if I put it on a minute switch it to there that that's on double now but it's a lot more powerful I don't know if you can still hear me see it working anyway it's a lot more powerful than that the one that I made up because the one I made up was um well <laughs> it was only like a the, the sort of fan that you have on um like a bathroom extractor van fan van what am I on about a bathroom extractor fan and it wasn't really powerful enough to pull all the fumes out of the spray cans but this thing here 
well, you can't smell anything. It just you smell a little bit, obviously, when you spray it, but it's gone instantly. It just gets sucked right at the back, and it's gone. And also, you'll see I've lined it with newspaper because I don't want it to get really stogged up inside. I thought, well, if I lined it with newspaper, all I've got to do is change all this here after so long. And obviously, I'm going to have to change the filter. But the filter stuff behind that, I don't know where to get this piece yet. Because they ask quite a lot of money for this piece. This is the blue bit that you see. It's quite dusty, that. I'm wondering whether that will all brush off of that. But the actual filters behind it is the same sort of filters. The, the same sort of material they use for oven filters. And you can buy that for 99p for two sheets down Trago. And it only needs like doubling over a couple of times. So I can get away with that, replacing that piece with that. And then put this piece back on. But yeah, it's a nice little spray booth. I'm really happy with it. So anyway, let's get on and spray this um, white on. Right, the paint I'm using is just the ordinary paint shop gloss. I've already, um, I've got the um, pieces all undercoated. So we're going to start this one up now. You might not be able to hear anything now. I'm not sure how loud it is. Might still be able to hear me. We're going to put a few coats of this um, gloss on there now. I'm only putting a few light coats on to start with and then we'll um, you know carry on once they're dried we'll put the um, put a few more coats on build it up and I'll do for that Do the, old, do the body. As you can see, the, the actual spray is getting pulled right away. I never let it, you know, go so quick as this and with my other spray booth. It used to like hang, hang around a bit. That's up, piece done. Police car. Let's do that one. Looking too bad.
other than the light. And there you go, look. And look how, look how clear it is. No fumes at all. Beautiful little spray booth that is. Well pleased with it. Right then, folks, I've got these sprayed up now. They're all kind of nice. They haven't been lacquered yet. I've got to um, do this now. I've got to put these decals on. So I'm going to get these put on. I'm not going to do it on camera because it's so awkward. I'm going to put these on and do the doors and then get it lacquered up. Then we're going to put it all back together. I've got to shine these little things up here a minute as well. That piece there, as I said, when you put your doors in, just put a bit of glue on each pin there. Put that over the top to hold your doors in. Like that. Job done. But anyway, I'm going to get on and put these um, decals all back on. And um, we'll start putting it all back together. And then we'll have a look on the old turntable and see what it looks like. Okay. <clears throat> oh, my throat's gone. As you can see, we've got all our bits all sprayed up now. And um, decals are put on. It's all been lacquered. I put the doors in, all, all that is is just I've cleaned the paint off the hinges so they'll go in a bit easier and I've scraped a bit of paint off of that piece we've got to stick on there. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna stick this piece on. And this is what you know this is what holds the actual doors in. So I'm gonna put a bit of glue on there with my little glue stick. <laughs> Hopefully not knocking the glue over again. Right, let's get a little dab. A bit on top of there. Take a bit off of there because there is, I did put too much on there then. Put a bit more over there. enough and then we'll just drop our little um, hinge holder on top hold that there for a minute try not to get the glue on your fingers because we will be handling this model that should do just hold that right I've cleaned I've cleaned up the tubes they go on the top I'm going to put a little bit of glue, I'll stick them in there, they go in that way, because there is a, there is a thing there on the front, so I'll put my finger underneath to steady it, there they go in like that, and what I'll do, I'll put a little bit of glue around there, just to, just to keep them steady, just to hold that that should be enough and our lights what I've done with these they were a bit scuffed they still are a bit scuffed but all I've done is just put a bit of nail varnish over the top of them just to you know sand them off slightly and put a little bit of nail varnish over the top just to get rid of the where I sanded it and all they do is just drop in like that in them two holes because the actual screen holds them in which is the next part so that goes underneath there just drops in like that don't need to stick this in because the seating part holds us in so all we've got to do is put our seats in it's been cleaned I'll close the front piece up like that just push it forward so that slightly and it just clicks in like that and that's all we do there the bottom piece as I told you that there has been polished up with the Dremel same with that I polished that up a bit 
and then all you do is drop that on. <laughs> like that. And like I said, I use screws for this one because I don't really want to permanently close this one before I get another piece of glass for it. All I've done is made the best of the glass I've got. So that's going to have to sort of do for now until I get a proper piece, a new piece for it. But I haven't actually got a piece yet, so in the meantime we're going to have to put up with these screws but that will do for now it's enough to look after it for now Let's put the other one in and this will be one half of our duo we're actually finished bar the um, painting of the back lights and what have you, if I can get this bloody screw in I don't cope well with these screwing and tapping jobs I cope better with rivets I hate using screws they do my head in right so there we go the bloody the trumpets on the top's a bit crooked now which they would be Oh, well, that'll do. I'm not messing around with that no more. I know I'm getting the pin sticking to my arm now with the super glue on it. Oh, God. Right. For now, oh, that's not too bad at all. They, they don't wheel very nice on my card or um, wooden surface because these, uh, these tires are quite hard and I ain't got any more tires. I thought I'd leave the originals on there, because it's only for show. Right, now we've got the ambulance now. Now this one, I'm going to have to stick this piece in. So I'm going to put a bit of glue on there. And put the front back on. I want a little bit. Around there. And around there. On that bit. Because that'll all that load it. It's pretty tight when it goes on anyway, so that goes through the O there. It's pretty simple because you've got two bars there that that line up as well. And that's where the lights go. So you push that in. That's a bit of a job to get in this one. I'm gonna have to squeeze it with the old tweezers. It's being a bit of a bugger this one, folks. You don't want to go back, but he's got to go back. I'm gonna have to do this off camera just for a sec. I think I what I'll do. I'll give it a wallop. I know I shouldn't do, but needs must. Forever. That's about as good as he's going to go. As long as that's flush. As long as that's flush up to there. It should be right. I ain't going in no further, so that must be it. So, right, that's that piece done. Now we want this bit here. It's a bit that holds. I'm going to have to use the tweezers for this because this is what holds in the actual doors. So it goes in there. 
bit of a funny old thing to get in this one. There he is. You can see the old marks. That's why I didn't spray it really, because you've got the old mark there. Let's see. To show you where exactly he goes there. That's where he goes. Push he down. Now I might have to take it out again. Then again, I might not have to. It depends if these doors is going to play ball. I'm going to have to push that and push the doors in. Now I ain't going to. I ain't going to have it. I'm going to have to put these doors in first, and then put the spring in afterwards. I think because he's been a bit of a bugger. So we'll get the doors in. Get them flush, and then we'll put the um, the retainer in there afterwards. Once the doors is all fitted in properly, it's easier said than done. This is get in there. All right. Now, see we get the spring back in there now. On there. Such an awkward job this is. Fairly old things these are. He don't want to go in, folks, but he's got to go in. Did he come across so late? Get in there. Get down there. Think I'll do it. Yeah. That's in as far as it'll go. Yeah. Looks alright to me. That's that done. Now we've got the little light there. Eat do the same as the last one, just let them drop in like that. Then you got your um this is a bit that was a pain in the butt to get out. That'll just drop in there. You're gonna have to, well, you're gonna have to push it in slightly I think. Get it to lock in there again. I think what I have to do, folks, is I'm going to have to scrape some paint off of this hinge bit, or am I? Because he don't want to go back in there. He ain't going to have it. And what I think it is, is it's a paint, because I've got fresh paint on that. It might, it might be alright. My lights fell out now. I'm going to have to scrape some paint off of here. Because he's not going in that. There, that. Like, oh, this here is going to have to come off. So I'll come back with that in a minute. Right, what I've done, I scraped the paint off of this and I've scraped the paint off the actual piece it goes into. So that has left us a bit more room. That just goes over there. Well, after I put the glass, of course. The glass is going to go in because that's what's going to move our little um, hinge in there. So we'll push that down, and then, like I said, you get this piece, it goes underneath, underneath there, and then just push down, and that'll load the glass in, then you get this piece, which goes on there, there's your bumpers, you see, I'm pretty sure it goes the other way around, isn't it? I think I've got it upside down. <laughs> What a jerk. There, yeah. Goes that way. And then, I'll re spray the bottom of this. And I'll just push the glass back with my fingers, because I'm an idiot.
Get down. Get down. Don't push the glass back with your fingers again. Like an idiot. Like I do. And then that is going to be screwed as well. Well, if I can get it to line up. Why not lining up now then? Did I have to bend it? Hang on. Let me, where can I put this? I've got to put this on something soft. And he's slightly bending. I don't know what's happened to that. I don't know how that has warped. Didn't need a lot. That goes on to there. Oh dear, things ain't going right today. I wonder why. And then it goes in there. Things are going wrong today, folks. I'm not having a good day. There we go. There. And I'll push the glass again. I'm going to have to put a bit of glue on that glass, folks, I think. I said you wouldn't have to, but I think I'm going to have to. Because it keeps popping down. So. Let's get my um, special super duper stuff. My silicon sealant. A little knob of that, a little blob, and then my screwdriver. Just put it on there. That'll do. Wipe you off in a minute. Right. Get that pushed right down. And that's gone all the way along the bottom of there now. It's even gone to that little blue light to hold that. That should hold that now. See it all discoloured there, that, that big circle, that big blob. That should hold that. Get that in there like before. Try it again. I think I've got a bit of muck in the elder. Pinching. That's why it's not going in. Try again. That hose are right there, I'm sure of it. Great. Here we go. Running games with the screws again. I tell you, I'm not very good with these things. Get in. Stop messing, around, messing me around here. I 
I'm going there, I'm going to rivet that piece. But anyway, for now, <coughs> for now, there we have it. That's the two. All they need now is their, um, what do you call it, um, backlight's doing. And that's another two. Couple of matchboxes. Hope you liked it. I'll get the lights painted on and um, we'll take a look on the turntable. See what they're like. Okay folks, well, this is what we started with. <clears throat> the Matchbox um, K26 Mercedes Benz Bins Ambulance. Got the little man on his stretcher in the back. And the um, K23 Matchbox Mercury Police Car. Both were a bit scruffy, paint missing. The, the windscreen on the police car is cracked and I haven't got another one so I have left the old one in when I've um, restored it because I haven't had time to get another one. But the ambulance was okay apart from needing a new coat of paint. New decals were needed on both. So anyway I left the tyres on as normal, I left all them as they were. So anyway after all what we did and um, all our efforts this is what we um, ended up with after taking them apart and respraying them not bad at all new decals well I say decals but they were stickers originally both both models had stickers on but I've I've made my own decals I prefer decals to stickers been nicely uh, repainted now and all shined up on the old Mercedes there all the tires are original still I am took them off and um, well basically I've had a good nice little makeover so um, like you see as you can see in the picture that the actual screen on the police car is the same one with the cracks in it but it ain't too bad from the distance but anyway they haven't come out too bad only better than they were that's, that's the main thing so if you like this video and uh, want to see some more I'll be back again very soon with another one maybe a double registration might not be who's to know but until then it's bye bye from me